Hello lads and lasses, how are you doing today? Yes, I've got another goblin for you. This is the third goblin I've unboxed on my channel. The first one was the handheld stick vac, followed by a goblin cylinder, then the goblin upright, and now another goblin cylinder. I've been fairly impressed with the goblin brand, considering how cheap they are. And at the moment you can only buy the Goblin brand at Asda stores in the UK, either online or in store themselves. I got this because it was on rollback for only £30, so it's definitely a budget priced vacuum. You'll have to check the website or your local Asda for availability at the moment. It may not be available now, but at the time of making the video I got this for £30. I think the normal price is about 45 Anyway, it's a 700 watt cyclonic, single cyclonic cylinder vacuum. Very basic, but slightly less basic than the one I tested previously. At least this one has a telescopic metal extension tube which uh, I did think the other one was lacking. The other one was quite good at picking up, but I was a bit critical of the plastic extension tubes. Here's all the tools you get inside the box. Not many, really. You get the carpet and floor nozzle, a hose. I expect the hose will be quite short. One of those awful dual-purpose crevice dusting brush nozzles and your telescopic tube the vacuum itself of course right let's have a look now first thing out is the hose and I'm quite surprised it feels it feels like it's a reasonable reasonable quality of hose it's short I'd say it's about one and a half meters in length got quite a nice curved hand grip with suction control. Obviously this is, doesn't have any electronic controls, it's just a manual air vent on there. And that's the end that goes into the machine. It doesn't swivel, that end. It might swivel once it's in the machine, but I don't think so. It might do, we'll soon find out. It does swivel at the handle end. So there's that. Here's the telescopic tube, it looks I'm not extended it, but it looks like it's one of those fairly short tubes. But, you know, it's metal, which is far better than the two-piece plastic set that I got with my other Goblin cylinder. Yes, yeah, pretty short, really. If you're very tall, I think you'll be stooping a lot when using this Goblin. But it's nice to see on a budget cleaner metal tubes. Here's the main carpet and floor nozzle. Unsurprisingly, it's an all plastic affair. No metal base plate. Not seen that sort of design before. It's a different design to the other Goblin. Looks like it's got a parking bracket slot on there, so there should be a parking bracket on the cleaner itself. Dual purpose, so it's for carpets and hard floors. With the brush down, that's for your hard floors, there's a brush at the front and a squeegee at the back. You've also got, just behind the suction inlet, one of the red litter pickers that help deal with pet hair. And you've got two wheels on the back. So, pretty basic standard nozzle, but I wasn't expecting anything at this price point. It's, um, it's a cheap vacuum cleaner, so you're not going to expect a top quality nozzle. Right, what else have we got? I think, well, there's an instruction book. Ah, yes. This nozzle. My regular viewers will have seen this nozzle time and time again. It's supplied with many vacuum cleaners of various brands. And you've also got a little dusting brush, sort of. Quite rigid, really. It's not suitable for really anything. I wouldn't trust that with my delicate, whoops, electronics. Um, not very good at all. I'm assuming that this it takes 32mm tools, standard 32mm tools. So you will be able to add better tools to this, or you might have some in the bottom of your cupboard from an older vacuum. So that's the only other tool you get with this Goblin. 
apart from the main carpet and floor tool. Here's the vacuum user guide. The model number is G GCV 303B. I think B might stand for black, possibly. So you've just got your very basic instructions. I don't think I'm going to need to refer to those very much. Obviously tells you how to clean the filters, etc. And uh, there's a 28 day no quibble refund from Asda should you not like this machine. Out it comes. Here we are. Quite nice colour in black. Black with lime accent. You know, taking it out the box, it, it seems okay, you know. £30. We haven't switched it on, of course, and we will be doing a demo of this. Well, we won't be, I will be. Here is, of course, the EU energy label. Let's remove the bin and remove the label. Well, it's going to be one I have to cut off, I think. I can't undo the loop. What have I done with my scissors? I've had them a minute ago. Here they are. Let's have a look at the energy label. I don't know if we're going to have an A in here. Oh, we've got two A's. I am surprised. Well, I did expect an A rating for energy use because it will be quite a low wattage. Well, I told you earlier, it's 700 watts, isn't it? Let's double check. It says 700 watts on the base. 700 watts, so that means it gets an A rating for energy. It gets a G, though, for dust emissions. That's dust exiting the exhaust of the cleaner. It's still a pass, A to G. Vacuum cleaners have to meet this criteria, but G is certainly the lowest um, that uh, is currently shown here. So it does mean really that if you've got dust allergies, you're sensitive to dust, maybe this is one to avoid. If that doesn't concern you, then you could possibly go for this. It might be okay for use in the car because you're using it outside, obviously, and the exhaust air is going into the atmosphere, but inside a house you might find it might upset your allergies. It gets an E, an E rating for carpet cleaning performance, so not very good, but my full demo will see how that performs. If it does get an A though for hard floors, so possibly if you've got mainly hard floors, this could be one to go for if your budget will only stretch to this amount. It's 82 decibels, which is on the high side. Some vacuums I've used are, are nearly 90, 89. 82 is mmm, but um, I'd like to see vacuums a bit less louder than 80 decibels, really. But it's a budget cleaner. Normally at budget end, you do expect a noisy vacuum. So that's the energy label. It uses 27.5 kilowatt hours per annum, whatever that means to anyone. So here's the cleaner. I must say I do like the black. It looks quite good and I certainly like the lime green accent colour. It will have quite a short mains cable. I think it's about five... Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't say I've already got a faulty one. I think so. I think I have. Might be taking this back actually because it's not staying out. That doesn't bode well, does it? I'll still do my demo, but I think I'm not going to take this apart. Um, the flexi wind is supposed to stay out until you press the button. I expect it's a simple fix. Um, I'll have to look at that. I might look at that. I don't know. We'll see how easy it is to get into, but that should really lock in place. So that is not good at all. Quality control has failed at this particular Chinese factory. I'm just going to have to... Well, we can see the Flex Rewind working. But obviously, I should be pressing on the Cord Rewind button. means me having to take this back. I'm not sure if they've got any at the moment. We'll have to see how well it performs otherwise. I'm going to use it. 
If it performs well, I might try fixing it. Anyway, here's the Flex Rewind. That you really shouldn't have seen. Looks like here, there is a space. There could have been a dial on some models. Now, although this is branded Goblin, you might find this exact cleaner, maybe with a different color and possibly different tools, it might be available in other countries under a completely different brand because Goblin is just a name that as they use, they, these aren't related to the Goblin of old. Got a big wheels, two big wheels on the back. There's no sort of nice rubber tire on the wheel. It's all hard plastic. And you've also got swivel caster at the front. For those of you who are interested, here's the rating sticker. I can't see that, I'm holding it at arm's length, so it's light. So as I said, it's a uh, model GCB303B, 220-240 volts, 50 hertz, 700 watts, batch number 112515, I wonder if that's well, it can't be the date. Well, 25th of the 11th, 15, maybe. Produced for Asda Stores Limited Leeds. Um, right, there we go. So, apart from the faulty automatic cord rewind button. No, it's still broken. You've got the other side on-off switch. This is your parking bracket for the main carpet and floor tool. Just fits on the side like that. This is the bin release. And while we've got the bin off, we'll have a look, see if there's any other sort of filter. There isn't, there's just a metal mesh screen here to stop anything very large. I mean, if anything's passed through the filter on the machine, it's going to be small, so that's no use, no ornament really. But um, anyway, that, personally, I would think a little filter on there wouldn't have gone amiss. That's probably why it doesn't do so well at the dust emissions. There's an exhaust filter, of course, at the back. Quite a thick sponge. But that's all we get for the exhaust filter. Um, there should be another filter at the top of the bin, I would have thought. We'll have a look in a minute. Which way does that go? That way. And uh, that way. There we are. And here's the bin. Again with the lime green, sort of a shroud in the middle there. At the back. You'd think, they, you'd think they'd have made that lime green as well, wouldn't you? That button. They've made it clear. So press that to release the dirt. Got a max max fill line here, and there should be, I would have thought, another filter underneath here. Yes, there we go. Very, very thin that filter. I've got quite a good rubber type seal. And it looks like all this though, because it's very, very simple, all this should be washable. There, that comes out. So you'll be able to rinse that under the tap and you've got a bit better access to give the bin a bit of a clean. Now with bagless cleaners, especially budget bagless cleaners, do be prepared for a fair bit of maintenance. If you want it to last beyond the guarantee period, you must keep your filters clean, you must empty it frequently, you must keep any debris free from the little shroud in the middle, any hairs especially might gather on that. Because it looks like the dirt actually enters the bin through this hole and it goes straight through into the sort of an inner plastic portion and then it'll go into the bin. So keep your filters clean. I find if, you've, if you're on a budget, it's better in the long run to buy a budget priced bagged cleaner than a budget priced cyclonic bagless cleaner because at the budget end the cyclones aren't very effective 
the filters get clogged pretty quickly. A lot of people forget about cleaning the filters and of course you've got a loss of suction. Right, well, all that remains. Let's that, actually, let's have a quick look where the screws are. Right, it's those funny shaped. I think I've got a screwdriver to fit that, hopefully. There seems to be one, two, three, six screws underneath that I'd need to remove initially to get into this. But really, I shouldn't have to. That should obviously lock in the open position. I mean, it should stay out, obviously. They shouldn't be rewinding. Oh dear. So it's a bit of a fail before we've even started with this goblin. Let's put the hose in. There we go, that sort of clicks in. Now it is fixed, doesn't swivel which is a shame. You might find it getting a bit caught up. It's very light. So, right, I'm going to plug it in, see if I can pull out the flex a bit more. And I'll just stand the cleaner. That'll stop, yeah, that stops it from rewinding back in. Hopefully, when I plug it in, it'll be in the off position. but that's not too noisy not too noisy at all really no. oh it's me winding stop it there we go let's uh, have a quick go of the suction <laughs> you know it's not bad it's not great it's not bad there's no onboard storage for that. Some budget cleaners have a little slot in the back. I've got some Hoover cleaners that have that nozzle and that stores at the back just under the exhaust grill. But it doesn't look like there's anything on this goblin. So that's likely, because it's so small, it's likely to go missing. Just check the instruction. Doesn't seem to be anything. Nope. No, it doesn't store on board. Right, let's attach. It goes on that way. Attach the old metal tube and put the carpet and floor nozzle onto the end. Fully extend it. Oh, dear me. Yes, it's very, very... Yes, if you... It's very short working position, so... Okay, if you're not very tall, let's just put that on properly. There we go. Let's give it a quick go. The nozzle stays flat to the floor when you're using it. It's fairly easy to push, but then again, there's not a huge amount of suction. But it doesn't um, skip along the floor. It does seem to stay, as I say, flat to the floor as you're pushing and pulling it. So it seems to be a reasonable carpet and floor nozzle for a budget cleaner. Right, well, I've got a little bit of dirt from another vacuum to hand, so I'll, I'll shove that down and we'll do a brief demo. I'll just park the cleaner there like that. So that's the machine parked, you know, for 30 pounds. Had the flex rewind not been faulty, it seems a pretty good buy. Okie dokie, let's move it out of the way. And I'll put down some dirt and we'll just give it a very brief demo. And hopefully, if I can get this fixed, we'll be doing a proper demonstration of this Goblin bagless vacuum. Well, here we go, I've put down some dirt. There's quite a lot of dog hair in there, so I'm not expecting great results from this goblin. I'm just going to try and clean up all of this, just using the machine as you would as a regular user. I'm not doing my normal thing I do in demos, because this is just a very quick preview, just to see how well it does. Okay, here we go.
I expected. It might look relatively clean from your position, but it isn't. It's, it's the dog hairs. It's got quite a lot of the hairs up, actually. And the carpet fibres and bits of fluff, as we can see from the bin. So it has done something, but, you know, it has left quite a lot of the pet hair, which I expected. It's not a surprise, really. In my experience, for cleaning up pet hair efficiently, you need an, either an upright or a cylinder cleaner with at least a turbo nozzle, or better still, a motorised nozzle. So if you haven't got pets and you've got mainly hard floors, it might be one to consider if your budget won't stretch to a more expensive cleaner. Okie dokie, well, no surprises there. We'll see how well it does on general dirt in my full demo. Well, that's just about the end of my unboxing and initial first look at this Goblin Bagless Cylinder Vacuum Cleaner. My first impressions are it's not bad for the money, apart from mine being faulty on arrival, of course. It deals quite well with dirt, but not pet hair, although I did go over the area again with the machine and it did eventually remove all the pet hair, but I had to go over it quite a few times, but it got there in the end. So for £30 if it's on rollback or £45 at full price, it seems fairly good value. But I'll be doing a full demonstration of this machine, also testing it on hard floors as well as carpet and seeing how effective and easy it is to use on stairs, etc. So thanks for watching. Please thumb up this video. If you have any questions about this machine, please ask in the comments section below. So until the next time, I'll see you very, very soon. Bye for now.